What's up, good people? Welcome again to another installment of my Advanced Fundamental Analysis series. This is part five, I believe, uh, but we're going to dive into, or I'm going to dive into, a couple of efficiency ratios um, or asset utilization ratios or whatever. But uh, so, first, I'm going to talk about something called the inventory turnover ratio. So this ratio basically says or gives gives investors an idea of how efficient a company is or management is at getting rid of that inventory. <clears throat> so in order to calculate this formula, you'll need the company's income statement and the company's balance sheet. We know that uh, uh, certain pieces of information are found on the income statement and then there are certain pieces of information found on the balance sheet so the way to calculate the the inventory turnover ratio is you take the company's cost of goods sold for a period so let's say we're going to do um, we're going to do end of year for the two not two, 2019 period and you take that cost of goods sold and you divide it by the average inventory for that same year. So we'll go to the balance sheet and calculate what the average inventory was for, 29, for 2019. So you'll take uh, 2018 and 2019 and divide it by 2. And that'll give us our average inventory. So let's see. For you. And to keep it simple, I type in the numbers just as they're listed. So, so average inventory is forty thirty one for uh, Apple. And let's go back to the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold for twenty nineteen, uh, one. Okay, so. All right, so the inventory turnover ratio for Apple for 2019 for the year is 40, pretty much 40. Um, now let me let me go to Morningstar and <laughs> make sure. Let's compare those numbers. If I can. Okay, yeah, so my number is exactly right, 40.13. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, check this out. Oh, actually, here I am. Okay, so the average or the inventory turnover ratio for Apple for 2019 for the entire year or fiscal year was 40.13. So that means that during that year, Apple went through its entire inventory 40 times. That's, that's an amazing number. Um, of course, you still want to compare that number with the inventory turnover ratio for its competitors just to see, you know, where it stands. But that's, that's a great number. What you can also learn from the inventory turnover ratio is... How many days does it take this company to go through its entire inventory? So you take 365 days divided by 40. So, so every 9 or 10 days, Apple goes through its entire inventory. So, um, so yeah, that, that 
that can really, really give you some good information about um, the company's management and and how that how how efficient they are with that uh, with that inventory um, and generating returns or revenue off of that inventory. So another metric that I want to talk about or ratio is the total asset turnover. So this ratio tells you how well a company uses its its uh, assets to generate sales. So the way that you calculate this formula is like the inventory turnover ratio, you'll need both the income statement and the balance sheet. Uh, so you take the revenue or sales and you divide that by the company's average um, assets, so total average assets. Um, so we'll do it for the same period of time, 2019, uh, fiscal year 2019. So you see that Apple's fiscal year ends in sept at the end of September. Um, so uh, there's our there's our sales for for that period. We'll go to the balance sheet and see what uh, the total assets were and we'll have to do an average of these two numbers give me just a second I'm calculating it uh, on my phone FYI so 338 Sorry guys, I keep pressing the wrong buttons on my calculator here. Okay, so 352120 is our average uh, of the total assets um, for that fiscal year 2019. Alright, so back to the income statement. Okay. Okay, so 0.73, basically if I round up 0.74. So the total asset turnover for Apple is uh, 0.74. Um, so that tells us that uh, Apple, hold on, my brain's a little slow right now. So that tells us that Apple, um, uses its total assets uh, hold on guys so that tells you that Apple um, let's do let's do some further calculation so that tells you that Apple is pretty um, efficient at using all of the tools in its arsenal to generate sales um, of course, this is another metric that, again, um, and it may be a little cliche, but it's really important that you compare this number with its competitors. So, um, what else can I say about the... Asset, total asset turnover ratio. Let me see what else can I, what else can I say? I feel like I'm missing something.
Okay, so basically with both ratios, generally the higher the number, the more efficient the company is. So of course Apple's turnover ratio could be more than one. Um, you can watch for a trend over time with both of those numbers to see if they're growing or shrinking uh, and then you, of course you you can do some further investigation into uh, into those uh, those numbers um, What I mean by that is you can look to see, you know, if, you know, what kind of assets a company may have on its books, uh, basically what could have happened to impact um, those ratios. So let's say Apple, for example, um, purchased... A, a, a large asset, right? So, um, to, to keep it simple, let's say sales were 10 and the average, so let's say, let's do a comparison. So, for 2019, let's say that sales were 10. Average uh, total, the average of the total assets were 5. So that would give us a ratio, a total asset turnover ratio of two, right? But let's say that um, the company decides, okay, we're going to purchase or we're going to make this large purchase, this large asset purchase. Um, and this purchase causes that average turnover or the average total assets to go to um, I don't know, let's say, um, 10. So then you take 10 and divide it by 10, and you get 1. So, the, so that large asset purchase significantly decreased that total asset turnover, so that, that asset turnover ratio. So that's something that that would require further investigation into, you know, why am I seeing this discrepancy from one year to the next between the asset turnover ratio. So you can't automatically assume that because you see a asset turnover ratio of two one year and then the next year it's one that, oh, the company is, some, some management has completely failed at, uh, at, uh, or management efficiency is completely just falling apart. Um, so if you see something like that, you're going to have to dig a little deeper into the company's books to see, you know, if they made any large acquisitions or anything like that. So anything that could potentially impact that formula, and that would be related to sales and assets. So yeah, it's pretty simple, but you know, not it can be a lot of work uh, in doing that. But this this just adds another layer of understanding when it comes to your company or researching uh, any particular company, uh, especially a company that you know you're already invested in or you're planning to invest in. Um, so let's let's just look and see over time what Apple's asset turnover ratio has been so okay inventory okay so generally Apple Apple's inventory turnover ratio has been decreasing over time so back in 2011 it was up to 83 highest during this period 111 um, also the uh, asset turnover ratio has been trending downward so 
you know, you would really have to do some digging into what sort of things have been impacting these ratios. Um, but of course, generally, you want to see those numbers increasing over time. You want companies to become more efficient with generating sales, more efficient with with going churning through that inventory. Um, because of course, you know, you when you when you invest in a company, you're investing in management, really. Um, so. You definitely, you, you gotta, gotta, gotta do deep research when you are considering putting your money, your future on the line for any particular company. So, you know, I just want to kind of assist with your being able to do that. Um, if you guys have any other questions, I'm happy to field those questions. If you have questions about other uh, metrics or something, just give me a you know, leave me a comment or something, and I would be happy to do a video on it. Um, if it's something that I'm not familiar with, I can research it and then present my findings. So, in other words, I'll find the answer. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week for part uh, is it part six. I think it'll be part six. I'm not sure what I'm gonna dive into uh, at that point, but definitely gonna continue with some uh, some key ratios. Um, so yeah, if if you like this video, uh, of course like it, thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel for more great videos coming, and I appreciate your time.